Dear fellow coders, welcome to On Little Coder. In this Python tutorial, you will learn how to create generative art using Python. So generative art or algorithmic art is a procedure in which you use an autonomous way, an automated way to create art so that something look like, looks like this. Whether you consider this to be an art or not, that's a different topic or a philosophical topic altogether. But the point here is you can use Python to create generative art that looks like this. And this is like if you see the NFT world, NFT non-fungible token world, a lot of these kind of arts are being sold on the internet as NFTs. So if you want to ride the wave or if you just want to make art for your hobby, this, this video is for you. So the library that we're going to use for this purpose is called Samila or maybe I'm just calling it Samila. You can call it whatever you want, Samila. Um, so yeah, I'm just calling it Samila. So Samila is a generative art uh, generator using Python. And it's, it's also, um, you know, you code with Python and it's also written in Python. And there is a very popular library in R that, uh, that does it. So this is also, you know, like uh, sl slightly inspired or referred by the same thing. So this library not just lets you create this arts, it also lets you possibly upload into, uh, upload as an NFT. So uh, I think there is a place where you can actually, you know, uh, directly, generate the image and store it in NFT storage if you want like if you have that uh, interest about nfts but if you are if you don't care about nft also let's say like you are not interested in minting money you don't want to do all those things but still if you want to create some nice art using your favorite programming language in this case i assume it's to be python then here samila is going to help you do that very simple so using simple python code you will learn how to create generative art like this and it's all mathematical equations so you can you can read more about you know how those mathematical equations work here in this github repository so i will i will link this github repository in the youtube description please check it out if you are interested in the math part but right now we are not going to cover the math part we're just going to go over the code and then see how we can create this and then few ways for us to iterate on it so that's that, that that's that's what this video is about this video is not about showing you the math um, or whatever is going to be behind this okay so samila is a package and um, as usual let's thank the developer the, de the developer in this case is sepand hagihi so thanks to sepand for making this amazing library and also making it open source so if you're watching this video please make sure that you start this repository it would mean a lot to the developer and also please give a shout out so to cre create this art generative art I'm using Kaggle notebook thanks to the free computation that Google's give Google gives us through Kaggle so I'm going to use this computation so once you go to Kaggle and create a new notebook click this you can create a new notebook the first step after I create a new notebook is create uh, sorry install the library so in this case I'm installing Samila library pip install Samila all that that's what you have to do all that is required so once you install the library, there are a couple of things that you might want to import. So random for random number generator and math for certain math functions like sine, cosine. And the plot, for you to display the plot, it's basically a matplotlib plot. So you want matplotlib. And then from Samila, you want to create the image using the class generative image. And some if you want to change the projections, if you want to play with the projection, then you want projection as well. So after you import all these libraries, let me just show you this importing all these libraries. Then you have to define the mathematical equation. You have to define what you want, like what is the equation that should be behind your art. So uh, in this case, I've just directly taken it from the example. So we have got uh, one function that takes two, two uh, parameters and then you know it, it creates a mathematical equation. And then there is a second function. So you can you can see the biggest difference between these two are uh, like one a sine function the other one is like a cosine function and then there are a couple of couple of changes so just run this thing and after you define the mathematical equation especially the functions that you want um, to be the heart and core or um, heart and soul i should say of these arts once you define that then you have to call this generative image and then create the instance so you have f1 and f2 and then you use generative image and then pass this so this generative image was inherited from here and then you're going to send it to this and then g dot generate image so i'm going to call this and then i'm going to say generate image and because we deal with random numbers if you want to recreate the same image 
it may not be possible unless you know the seed value so you there is an attribute called seed so if you see the seed value so if you want the image that we're going to pro create now the exact same image then you can use the seed value so after you see the seed value all you have to do is g.plot and that should ideally create the image for you um, if you are on jupyter notebook or google collab notebook or uh, something like kaggle notebook g.plot will do it but if you are on your cli or somewhere else then um, then you need then you need to have uh, plot.show as well like pld.show that would display the image but but if you're on any notebook environment this is taken care of so this is a this is an art like if you consider it to be an art um this is this is a very simple example where you have uh, you have taken two math functions and created a generative image like if you you can see how playing with the math function might you know have a like a different role altogether like for example instead of this being sine uh, if i make this cosine and then create generate the chart you can see how the how the chart or the art changes right um so it's 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 being generated so you can see how it has changed so from something that look like that or on the other hand if you make both of them sign and the, again like you can play with the equation right you can go to the internet and find the equation or um, the you know the math that generates a very nice art and then you can get this and then just come to come to this code and then just create that equation here it's no brainer to create that equation from whatever you have learned and then you can make some changes and you get that something looks like this now if you see this thing maybe this is very basic it may not appeal you a lot but there are certain things that you can do to enhance this and one of the things that you can do to enhance this is projection so this particular library uh, currently supports six different types of projection uh, rect uh, rectilinear polar eight of hammer lambert molyweed so these are different types of projections projections that are supported the default projection that you just saw is rectilinear so if you take the same equation if you see in the same generated image and then make it polar so make the projection polar so for example i can just go here and then say projection is equal to projection dot polar so if i oh did i just say project projection dot polar you would ideally see now it's been polar projected so you would you would see it in a circular fashion right so now you can change it like for example you don't want um, polar as well so maybe let's say you want lambert so you can go and then say lambert and then see how that projection looks like so first step the places where you can play with if you want to create an art is the equation part like you can have different equations that drive how a particular art is made the second place where you can play with this is places like this so instead of um, even even though you have created an equation and then instead of making simple a uh, rectilinear projection you can change the projections and then make something that looks like this and after you let's say play with the projections you have changed the projections like a couple of projections like for example let, let's take hammer and um, one final time let's try hammer projection and see how it looks it looks like this i hope it is terrible yeah so once you play with these projections this uh, next thing you can do is uh, you can change the color of it so i can go here and then say color is equal to let's say pink and then i can just run this thing i hope it it takes pink i should have given lower ca lower case pink yeah so you can see the pink but because the pink is so light you cannot actually see what is happening so maybe now it's a time good time to introduce bg color bg color let's say i want it to be black and i want the friend to be pink and then now you can you can basically play with this so this is this is another example where you can see that yeah this looks like this so this is another example where you have got a yellow color projection a yellow color in a black color background and the projection is polar so i we can we can make this polar and then try yellow and then see how it looks probably it might look something that looks closer than closer like this and you can see how this oh oh nice yeah this this looks much better right so you can you can now create different waveforms you can create whatever art you want and ultimately like if you want this to be uploaded to an nft 
NFT storage automatically, like a place where you can sell your own NFT. And then you have you have an option like NFT.net is is um, is a place where you can do that. And then again, like um, there are there are different things that you can play with this, right? You can if you want to create the same image, for example, let's say you have already created an image and then you know the seed value of the image, then what you can do is uh, while you're going to generate the image, you can actually pass on the seed value and then generate the image. So this way you have the ability to regenerate the email that has been generated before otherwise which is a random function right so whatever you are generating for example in this mathematical equation it's basically from a random function so which means for you to, i mean random function is like a pseudo random right but if you want to recreate it then you have to pass on the seed value here uh, so that it will regenerate the same thing that was generated before so that's one important thing to know and then like i said like if you want it to be uploaded to nft then you can upload it to nft or if you want it to be stored somewhere locally you can simply use the save image function method and then you can save the image so based on the resolution that you want you can also do it and like i said if you are quite interested in the mathematical uh, mathematical details you can look at this libraries github repository where it says Samila is simply a transformation between a square shaped space from a Cartesian coordinate system to any arbitrary coordination like let's say like pol polar coordinate system. So you can you can read more about it, how this kind of transformation is happening and what kind of functions are used for the transformation and how it has been, you know, changed from one one form to another form. So like for example, there is an equation here. You can also see how you can transport or encode this equation into transcode this equation into the math mathematical equation in python and then also generate subsequent charts so um so this is it basically create your own generative art in python and uh, and now you know you can do a lot of things like you can like i said you can if you want to sell it as nft you can sell it as nft if you want just to make a wallpaper out of it you can make a wallpaper out of it if you want to upload it on let's say unsplash wherever you want you can upload it or simply if you want to feel good that you have made a machine a computer program create an art for you of course you can feel proud about that that you have made a machine create generative art using python the language that you love we love so that's it uh, i will link this kaggle notebook in the youtube description all you have to do is like i'll, I'll just save it now um, and again i'll do a quick save all you have to do is when you get this notebook you have to just cl click the link copy and edit that notebook so you would see copy and edit the top right copy and edit the notebook then run all the lines of the code and it should ideally work out of the box without any issues once again thank you so much for the developer to make samila and then making it open source i think it is it opens up enormous opportunity especially teaching python um, i mean like if somebody is interested in this kind of stuff these kind of things make students curious so it's a very nice way to learn like if you if you're into math then again this is a place for you to explore if you're into art this is a place for you to explore and also if you want to interest if you're interested in making some money i don't know like if i upload an nft i think nobody's going to ever look at it in their entire lifetime but again what if you are a popular personality and you upload something and then people are just behind it so if any of this thing interests you then check out this kaggle notebook in the youtube description let me know in the comment section what you think about this video also give me thumbs up if you like this video that's a good signal for me stay safe Happy programming. See you in the next video.